first time the Prime Minister will face MPs in the Commons for the first time since being fined for his role in the Partygate scandal. Now, it's worth clarifying that that fine that he accepted doesn't make him a criminal because paying a fixed penalty notice isn't the same as getting a criminal conviction when you then get criminal record and so on. Opposition, par opposition parties are considering if they should force a vote on whether, it's, whether or not Boris Johnson was in contempt of Parliament. We're now joined by the Shadow Attorney General, Emily Thornberry. Emily Thornberry, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. What do you want to hear from Boris Johnson today? He will be addressing Parliament later on today. What's, what's the ideal outcome from your point of view? Well, first of all, I think that it it's should be said that... Um, that he will be praised for what he's been doing in Ukraine and the bravery that he showed in the visit to Ukraine recently. But when it comes to Partygate, what we want him to do is do more than the usual uh, general expressions of regret, um, which sound more like a regret about the fact that he's got caught than anything else. Uh, we want him to come and we want him to apologise for misleading Parliament, for telling us that no rules were broken and no parties took place, because... That's simply not true. And we want him to admit that he knowingly misled Parliament because that is the case. He knew that there were parties going on all the time in uh, in Number 10 Downing Street. They were such a regular... Uh, they happened so often. I mean, I, I remember there was an interview with Dominic Rabb on this very show in which he said that when he was Prime Minister, or Prime Minister for a few days when the Prime Minister was in, in hospital with COVID, that there were no parties, that there were no Wine Fridays. In other words, he was making it clear that when he was in charge, there was a different culture at Number 10. You remember so, that... Alleg no, you carry remember on, Emily. I was going to say, when Allegra Stratton was talking about it, all the, you know, the first time that we ever heard about this, why was she laughing about it? She wasn't laughing because she thought it was funny. She was laughing because she wasn't innocent, because none of them were innocent, because they knew that there was something wrong was going on at Number 10. And it is simply incredible for the Prime Minister to come to Parliament and continue to say that it all came as a great big surprise to him, because, for heaven's sake, he was at many of these parties. He's already had one... A penalty as a result. We understand that there may may will, will be many more. We certainly hear of many stories coming out of Number 10 about the Prime Minister's active involvement in these parties. He cannot have come to Parliament and truthfully said that no parties had taken place and no rules have been broken. So therefore, he's breached the ministerial code. It's his code. He's judge and jury about it. If he's broken the ministerial code, what is he going to do about it? He should resign. So, in... When he came to Parliament, he might argue that... Well, I suspect he will. This is what we understand. He's going to say that the advisers at the time told him no rules were broken. He now knows they were broken. You could say that's incompetence, because he was the lawmaker of those rules, the rulemaker, but he didn't realise they were broken. But I, I think we are unlikely to hear that he came to Parliament and willfully misled them. If he does take that position, what will you do? What will you do? Because you've already called for him to resign and he doesn't look like he's going anywhere. Well, the first thing I'd say is that the public don't believe him and we don't believe him. You know, the public don't believe that he is that he's anything other than a liar. They believe he's a liar, they believe he lied about this, and, and to a certain extent he keeps wriggling on this issue, but the public have already made up their minds and they're furious about it because they made a whole lot of sac sacrifices and you didn't see loved ones, weren't allowed to go to 21st birthday parties, weren't able to have proper weddings or funerals or any of the other things. Whilst they were doing the right thing at number 10, they were laughing at the public and the public will remember that and the public are not forgiving them. So that's kind of number one. So number two is, well, what do we do about it in Parliament? So we're having discussions with the Speaker today. The, the opposition parties are, are, are in discussions as to what the right way forward is. I don't want to cut across that. But, you know, the truth is, Kate, is that even if we did come up with the, with the best possible um, way of voting on this, we have to have Tory MPs voting with us because they have a majority of 80. Mm. Even if all the opposition parties got together and voted down the line on one way forward, we couldn't actually win that vote unless Conservative MPs look into their consciences and do the right thing.
So, so, so can I just clarify, Caroline Lucas has called for an official investigation, a formal investigation as to whether he misled Parliament, which could lead to the vote that you're talking about, and it could lead to uh, the Common Standards Committee uh, taking effect. Are you backing those calls that, from Caroline Lucas? Um, what I'm saying is that there are we're we're working with the speaker on what the best way forward is, and we're working with the opposition parties. And there hasn't been an well, announcement I, yet. Just, just until a, until, a, until, a, until an agreement is reached with the speaker, it wouldn't be right for me to be announcing it here, much as I'd want to but, on but your why, show. Why wouldn't you just back an investigation? It's a very simple thing. You you literally for the last few minutes been saying that we need to we, we need more details, and and he needs to be held accountable. Surely a formal investigation is the way forward. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you just call for that? Well, there have been a number of investigations. I mean, there's an ongoing police investigation. There's been the Sue Gray investigation. And, and in the end, you, you can't climb inside the Prime Minister's head um, you know, and find out for absolute 120% sure that, uh, that the Prime Minister knew. But we know because of the circumstantial evidence, we can see, the public can see, of everything that was going on, given the number of, 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 of illegal parties that were happening at Number 10, it is simply incredible. It is just not believable for the Prime Minister to say that in his home and in his office he had no idea that parties were taking place. I mean, for heaven's sake, we've heard about them happening in his flat, in, 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 in the, you know, in, the uh, in, in various rooms, in the garden, in, in, the, in the cabin, um, when... Uh, Cake crept up on him and he didn't realise that it was there. I mean, it's, it's, it's not credible and the public are furious and rightly so yeah. because, you know, they made sacrifices and he didn't seem to in the same way and he didn't take his own rules seriously. And the rules apply to everyone equally. There is not one rule for them and another rule for okay. everyone else. Well, look, you, you mentioned that the, you said that the public see him as a liar. I think you may be also be referring to a poll in the Times or a survey where you, you have to pick out a word that best describes, and liar was the word that, that came out uh, that's published in the Times this morning. Liar was the word that came out as attached to Boris Johnson. Um, and yet, you know, uh, Labour is ahead in the polls, but the the the... the, the the gap between Labour and Tories has reduced over the last couple of months, hasn't it? And I wonder if that's because there is a general feeling that all politicians can't be trusted and they do feel Boris Johnson has done well on Ukraine. Just in terms of, of authenticity on all sides, um, we've just been looking at some of the things you've said about, for instance, the Ukrainian refugee situation. So, um, in 2019, it was public knowledge that you have three houses. In an interview um, last month, middle of last month, you said that you'd be very happy to house Ukrainian refugees. Uh, have you actually got yourself on as registered to house them in one of those three houses? There's a family living in my, my late mother's house that I bought her in order for her to move out of the council house that I was brought up in. And the council house then went back to the council. So there's a family living there and they've been living there for several years. Um, the other house is one that we helped a member of my family to find somewhere to live. Um, so that is there. I have said that if, uh, if I'm called on to play my part, I certainly will. Okay. Um, but what we've, seen, what we've seen is so many people coming forward and volunteering to take in Ukrainian refugees but there simply are not enough Ukrainian refugees actually getting into the country because of the incompetence of the Home Office and the fact that the public are well ahead of the Home Office when it comes to knowing what the right thing to do is. So there are plenty of homes at the moment available um, for refugees. Um, I've had discussions with my family about this and we are certainly, you know, we'll play our part if necessary and we would do gladly. But at the moment, there aren't even enough. And it's unless you know of a refugee and are able to apply specifically mm. for that person to come into the country, it's simply not happening. Um, and sense, you know, the Emily. home office is okay. far, too, far too long. All right. Um, uh, we'll have to leave it there. Thank but... you for clearing that up. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Shadow Attorney General Emily Thornbury and the Northern Ireland Secretary Brandon Lewis will be joining us as well later this morning to speak on behalf of the government.